If you've been watching woodworking on YouTube for any amount of time, you've probably seen people using the hot dog to make the saw stop table saw stop working and save your fingers. But what you probably haven't seen is how to change the blade after. And in this video, we're gonna show you just that. So stay tuned. A couple weeks ago, I was at the Rockler shop in Fairfax, Virginia for their foundation day event where they had a bunch of uh, specials and stuff like that. And one of the things that I noticed with this guy, Wayne, was going to give a demonstration on the saw stop. And even though I've seen many of these hot dog demonstrations for the saw stop on video, I've actually never seen the brake activation in real life. And in this video, we're going to see Wayne talk about the whole saw stop thing. He's going to demonstrate how to use the hot dog in lieu of your fingers to activate the brake. But more importantly, we're actually going to see how to change the blade after the fact so that you have a better understanding of what happens, how much damage is done, and whether or not it's easy or difficult to actually extract the blade with the brake embedded into it, because it kind of looks like this. This is actually the, the blade in the brake from the video. So we're gonna see how this comes out so that you can put a new one in. Let's get to it. The saw stop's been on the market now for 20 years. It was invented by a Dr. Goss, and he went around trying to sell it to everybody that made uh, table saws all the big manufacturers, and they all told him, no, we're fine with the way things are going. He believed in it enough to say, well, if, if nobody else is going to do it, I'll start a company and start making myself. He had such trust in it that he actually put one of his digits into the blade to, to prove that it worked. To this date, there have not been a recorded failure of the brake mechanism. There are five different models. Every model takes the exact same brake. This one can go into that one and to any of the others. It is a 10-inch blade and almost i can say there's probably very very few restrictions on what 10 inch blade you can put in there some of the companies will coat them if you have any question about whether or not your brand and model will work in there just call saw stop they have fantastic customer service it takes only about five minutes to change the blade out Maybe if you really struggle, no more than 15, and I'm talking about really struggle, something locked up in there and, and, or you're learning how to do it. And hopefully you don't learn how to do it, okay? Because if you're getting good at it, something's wrong. You're, you're tripping too many blades, too many breaks. But this is what it looks like after the brake has impaled itself in the blade. There's a very slight charge on the blade itself, kind of like the face of your, your cell phone that senses your skin and when it does it sends the computer in here sends a charge to the uh, brake which has a I think it's called a friable uh, wire in there that gets burnt through split second fast and the spring here actually jams the brake into the blade bring it to a stop 10 times faster than your airbags go off. I personally have had probably at least six customers were wearing some kind of bandaging on one of their hands. In all cases, except for one, it was a table saw that caused the injury. And one guy showed me the picture. He, he let me take pictures of it if you want to see it later. But he said, up to that point, and they're not done, it's cost $68,000. Mm. Now, $68,000. If you look at our most expensive saw, this big one in the middle, that's running, what, about $4,800 or something like that, depending on how you trick it out with the horsepower and this table size and all that stuff. Let's just round it up to five or $6,000. $68,000, that's 11. He could have bought 11 of those table saws for the cost of not having the uh, saw stop in the first place. The value of what you're getting when you uh, get a saw stop, they're living with that pain and agony the rest of their life. You're avoiding all that with this technology here, and they're not that much more expensive than a regular table saw. When you uh, get ready to start it up, there's two switches down here that you engage on this saw. When I flip the switch up, you'll see there's two little windows with a light behind them, and they will, one flashes green, one flashes red, and it, that's running through the self-test. And now it's going through its test cycle, red, green, red, green, red, green and you wait until it gets to green only. A couple of things that will set this brake off besides the hot dog or your fingers. Wet wood, something that has moisture in it, like pressure treated wood is a good example. And the other one is uh, something with metal in it, barbed wire, a bullet, a nail, a staple, any of those kinds of things. So I strongly suggest if you, not if, when you buy a saw stop, we also sell a, a metal detector. There's two versions, a small one about this wide, and then a larger one, you've all seen them, you've probably all had them applied to you at one point or another at the airport where they wand you front and back in the old school days. 
check you out for metal, they will save you the cost of a blade and a brake. So make sure you know your product when you do it. Now there is a way to test to see if that wood would have set the brake off. Here's the mistake a lot of people make, and it's never the person, it's always your friend that, that did this, right? He had four, let's say, uh, pressure treated piece of wood, and he knew they were moist or thought they were, so he tested them and said, yeah, they're wet, you need to go into bypass mode. So when you go into bypass mode, you are deactivating the brake, so it will not go off. Whether it's your finger or the board, it won't, the brake will not go off. Your friend fed the board, first board through, went fine, got the second board, was feeding it through, and his phone started ringing. Being the safety-minded guy, he didn't stop. He went ahead and, and finished that. Then he stood back from the phone and took the phone call. Hold on a minute. I can't understand you. My saw is running. Let me turn the saw off. So he turns the saw off. I finish the conversation, hang up, come back over here, turn the saw back on. Guess what? You're not in bypass mode at this point. He forgets that and he feeds his third board through, bam, brake goes off. So once you turn, when you put it in bypass, feed as many boards as you want through there. But once you turn it off, bypass is shut off and it's back in a safe mode. So you want to be sure that you remember to go through bypass again to feed those last two boards through. Otherwise, we'll be seeing you here to buy a new brake and hopefully a, brake, a blade too. So anytime you start your motor, you want to make sure you're not in contact with your wood. So I've drawn it back. She even find a nick on it. Yeah, not even a mark, is it? <laughs> is it now? Oh, wow. It's not, not a mark. <laughs> wow. Is not a mark? No. Not a mark. Anybody want to see it? I've seen it before. Amazing. Okay. That would have been your finger there had it not been there is a mark there. Toss top, you know. Oh, wow. That right there saved you sixty-eight thousand dollars worth <laughs> of damage. You may think that, well, I'm very, very careful. I've been doing woodworking for 30 years. Guess what? We've seen guys in the store bandaged up who've been doing woodworking for 30 years, and it happens. I just ask you for as little as for the contractor saws, 1999. For 1999, isn't it worth it to have something that you don't have to worry about? And wives, you don't have to worry about your husbands, or husbands, you don't have to worry about your wives cutting their thumbs or fingers off. Make sure it's unplugged. Gotcha. Remember the angle out. Air lights. Some of them. There we go. What are your thoughts on their professional 60 tooth blade? It depends on what you're wanting to. Uh, Wanting to use to if you have, I have 50 tooth blades, so I need a 60. You have a what? I have like 50 teeth. 60? 50. 50. I have oh. 24, 40, and 50. Uh-oh. Geez, I never heard about 50 before. Yeah, the um, CMT makes one, a combination yeah, okay. of 50 tooth. All right. All right. Gosh, I'm having more trouble engaging the daggum nuts than anything else here. Okay. Got it. Nice. Now these doors on this one swing open to allow you to get your bigger hands in there, okay? So do that, take the nut, get the washer. Oh yeah, even the CTS opens on the side, right? Even the what? The CTS one opens on the side. Um, yeah, they, okay. So now is when the fun begins. You have to unlock the, the um... Yeah, now take this off. Okay. And then get the pin out. Oh, so that physically comes out. Okay, gotcha. Yep. And then you just start getting in there and try it. You see how the brake moved a little bit? Okay.
Is there, so there's no way to pry under the brake itself, like underneath in that there? No. Okay. Okay, you can see it's moving away from the, uh, from the, see the gap down there now? Oh, uh, yes. Between the blade and the arbor? Yes, yes. Okay. Got this out a little too far. Got one of my salt water right. there. Sometimes it helps to get two of them in there. Gives you extra leverage. I'm gonna, I'm gonna raise it up. Oh, sure. Yeah. There we go. There we go. There we go. All right. Perfect. There we go. Excellent, excellent. So there it is. The blade has been taken out with the brake and has been changed. And now you can start again with a new blade, a new brake. It does cost you a little bit of money, but at least you still have your fingers, which is the very most important part of the whole equation. Saw stop does cost more than other saws, but how do you factor in not losing your fingers, not being out of work, not being totally injured or perhaps maimed for the rest of your life? It is a difficult proposition when you're looking at two, three, four, five hundred dollars for a table saw versus 900 and up but i think if you really think about like perhaps what could happen to you it's going to be worth it in the end like you'll see a lot of people online woodworkers and they're like i've been doing it for 35 years i've never had a problem yeah that's a fantastic thing there's no guarantees that you will have a problem in 35 years but perhaps after 45 years maybe there's one day when you just kind of like lose track and something goes wrong something slips and then what happens Something to think about. Hope this uh, video has been helpful and informative to you. If you enjoyed it and found value in it, please consider subscribing to the channel and at least give us a like and uh, see you next time.